For many years, Kickstarter Crap was IDEPS TV's flagship series alongside Bad Unboxing, though it predates the latter by a wide margin. The series, spanning over a hundred episodes, covered an assortment of projects, from music videos and gaming channels to utilitarian coolers and fall hoverboards. Throughout the series' existence, however, some characters would stand out by retaliating against IDEPS's criticism with response videos. They would come back swinging and missing, then fading into obscurity, leaving behind no more than in-jokes and nicknames, to be repurposed by Ian himself, and perhaps a certain inspiration for the Content Cup series to come after. Of this group, perhaps the most unfortunate tale is that of Lucas McKay Hansen, known online as Lucy Diamond Dies, Gemin Wise, or the so-called Lil Caesar's Grime Stepper. Grime Step, oh boy! Blah, 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 blah. It's a story of ambition, narcissism, and continued destruction of one man's online presence and social life as a result of poor decision making, negative reinforcement, and drug use. Hello? I'll fucking film it, dog. I don't have time! A million dollars, John! I told you! I told you a million dollars, John! The following is that Grime Stepper's unsung ballad. On the 16th of May 2015, a project was launched on Kickstarter asking for $50,000, titled Schizophonic TV, with the subtitle reading, I'm looking to play jokes on people. This project was initially titled The Fox Step, as shown in its URL and on kicktrack.com, and was likely changed to comply with Kickstarter guidelines. This is corroborated by the fact that the very first comment, left by Lusik, has been removed for similar reasons. The project was poorly organized, poorly written, Pizza time. and poorly presented, and featured several short videos of what Lucas called Gorilla New Age style jackass skits, though viewers would generally recognize these as cringeworthy acts of harassment on the streets. The project saw little to no attention for nearly a month, until it received its very first donation on June 9th of that year. The donation of one dollar came from none other than Max Stanley, better known as Max Mofo, and was accompanied by a comment which iDubs would feature in his Kickstarter crap. The comment reads in part, quote, I donated one dollar just to let you know you will never make it. I know this dollar will be refunded and it's worth donating, just so I can comment and let you know how painful it was for me to sit through this garbage. Please delete your channel and never beg for money again. P.S. Stop forcing pedestrians and workers to listen to your terrible dubstep beatboxing. P.P.S. Shave your goatee, it's a waste of human hair." Unquote. Scathing as the comment was, it would not come alone. A day later, Eidos would release the video, which would bring Lusik the attention he had asked for, but perhaps not in the best possible way. Schizophonic TV. Schizophonic TV? It uh, kind of sounds like iDubs TV, but it's very different. It's very different in the fact that uh, it's a lot more cringe-inducing than iDubs TV is. Released on May 10th, the Kickstarter crap saw iDubs showcasing the project and the videos contained within it, subjecting his unwitting audience to a soul-crushing level of cringe. I'm looking to play jokes on people out in the public. I need a camera crew and investment. YouTube Gemini's. Now, if you YouTube Gemini's, you're gonna find fucking droves of videos. If you just go to the Kickstarter project, you're gonna find droves of videos that are just the fucking worst shit in the world. From the poorly worded written content and pain-inducing videos to the outrageous funding goal and single $10,000 reward tier, there was nothing redeemable to the project, letting Ian tear into it with gusto. Currently, the video has around 4.6 million views, placing it between Gator Poon and the ass-funding Kickstarter in terms of popularity. Fame like this couldn't slip past Lusik for long. The video prompted another Kickstarter user going by Michael to imitate Max's method, donating a dollar to leave another comment that very same day. This comment reads in part, quote, And this was the second dollar you just got for the ability of a backer to be able to make a comment, 49,998 to go, came across this through this video, unquote. The video linked was obviously the Kickstarter crap episode. But nothing would come of it just yet, with the project ending on May 16th, having only received three dollars, all of them from backers only wanting to leave comments on the project. The third backer did so just to respond to Max, stating, Max, I feel there are far more egregious uses of human hair, that is all. 
Though this doesn't relate to Lucic's story, it certainly does relate to that of Max and Idubs in the near future. What are you fucking gay? On May 22nd, a YouTube user going by DJ Paint released a video titled Douchebag, featuring IDUBS TV and Lucid Diamond Eyes. The video, still available on YouTube, is a song remixed using IDUBS remarks and sound bites from Lucid's clips. Though this video, sitting currently at little over 10,000 views, didn't garner significant attention, save for being commented on by both IDUPS and Max, it did catch Lucic's attention, with him tweeting it out repeatedly on June 6th from his Twitter account, at the fuckstep. It seems that he took the video as a compliment of sorts, as he even apparently went as far as to add it to his Gemini's playlist. On June 11th, he tweeted out a link to the Kickstarter crap itself, and on the 14th, he uploaded his response video, tweeting it twice at iDubs, and sharing the douchebag remix once more for good measure. The response video featured Lucic recording himself, presumably in his home, with a woman, possibly his partner, also present. The video opened with Lucic sarcastically praising iDubs and deriding himself, and frankly only went downhill from there. Watches iDubs TV, you're tuning into iDubs. iDubs, 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 iDubs. Dude, this guy made a response video. My YouTube channel is going viral. LOL, I don't really have to do anything besides make one back clowning on him and make my shit go viral. With his insults towards iDubs being reminiscent of those said by Quaffine a year earlier, presented in a more incoherent manner in between bizarre ramblings. I uh, want to touch base on a topic today. Uh, I want to touch base on Lucic Diamond Eyes. He's a one-trick pony. And uh, I just want to say that he's a jackass. Yeah, Gaylord jackass. Many commenters pointed out how disheveled Lucic looked, more so than his usual YouTube content, a trend which would continue as the years went on. Idub's reply featured several Facebook posts from Lucas himself. His intentions were to clown on Idub's in this response and to go viral as a result with less than 4,000 views initially to speak of, an overwhelmingly negative reception to his response, it suffice to say that he didn't quite achieve his goals, though he did boast about the increase in views he had received from Reddit, as Lil Caesar's dubstep video had been posted to r slash cringe subreddit, gathering over 2,000 upvotes, in his response video and on Twitter it seemed as though Lucic also hoped to collaborate with iDubs, but it was obvious that Ian had no interest in this. Lucic ends the video by announcing that he would be using a new channel, although it's unclear what he meant by this, as the channel had been made all the way back in 2011. July 25th then saw the last of Lucic's activity on Twitter, linking to his videos and tagging iDubs TV and Jim Carrey in an attempt to garner attention, but this too failed. Much of Lucic's earliest content has been permanently lost, due to the Lucic Diamond Eyes channel being deleted in its entirety, and the Gem and Wise channel having been cleared of all content at some point. Similarly, his Facebook profile, which was at one point his main platform for releasing content, has also been removed. As such, only a portion of his old content is still available on a YouTube channel dedicated to archiving them, alongside whatever scraps can be gathered on social media and the Wayback Machine. Putting together Lucic's origin story wasn't going to be easy, until I was able to contact someone who had the pleasure of knowing the man personally. This person, who had opted to remain anonymous, had known Lucas in high school and had even smoked weed with him from time to time. According to them, Lucas had already been heavily into hip-hop, dubstep and beatboxing at the time. This being the early 2000s, Lucas was certainly ahead of the game. The source also said that Lucas would often act wildly in public, though not to the extreme you'd see in his videos later on. In their own words, We always joked that Lucas had multiple personalities and you never knew which one you were gonna get, because there were times when he would actually be really chill. He was kinda all over the place." Unquote. Speaking with our anonymous source, I was able to confirm the legitimacy of their stories due to one detail I was able to find about Lucic's past. His criminal record in Boise, Idaho, the first result that comes up on Google when you look for Lucas's full given name, though the details of it had been placed behind a paywall. Lucic had a history with drug use, going back at least to high school, as he had been caught with illegal substances in the early 2000s, the source saying he wound up in drug court after the fact. 
though he must have gotten out of it at some point since he had no qualms about smoking weed later in high school. Alas, the problems wouldn't end, as Lucas would be caught again and charged with aiding and abetting possession of a controlled substance on February 9th, 2005. It's unclear what the substance in question was. It's possible it was marijuana, but due to his history with different substances, it's possible this was cocaine or ecstasy. According to the case files, he would remain incarcerated for over two years and remain on parole until July 30th, 2010. During his time on parole, he seems to have stayed at a halfway house together with Bobby, the friend who was seen most often alongside him in his videos. Just so he can make a pretty penny. Now my car light doesn't have to die because I put this on top of there. That's a good idea, Bobby. I know. I mean, just like so an he angel. can make a pretty penny. That's that's all he wanted. Frequently acting as a cameraman. And indeed, it would be only a year after his full return to society that Lucic Diamond Dice would make his name known on the internet, though his audience would take years to grow. On the 11th of February, 2011, a YouTube account was created titled Geminwise. Though much of the content is no longer available on any platform, Wayback Machine shows the channel being fully operational and still going by the name Lucic Diamond Dice as late as August 2016. However, the oldest video available of Lucic doesn't come from his own channel, the latter being scrubbed clean of his old content, with only parts of it maintained by the Lucic Diamond Eyes archive on YouTube. The very first video of Lucic we could find, in turn, is actually still available, uploaded to a YouTube account called Water Water on March 28th of 2011 and currently has only 661 views at the time of writing. Lucic opens the video by introducing himself, as well as his location, San Gabriel Valley in Southern California. Accompanied by his friend, Lucic proceeds to showcase the sounds of his grime step for nearly two minutes non-stop. Lucic had supposedly made the move from Idaho to California in order to be discovered, having begged his mother for a flight to the state. Unfortunately, little would come of this, and even less of it would be effectively documented. The next video is still available being from 2012 or 2013, though not much appeared to have changed in the time between these videos. You walk on by, you think I'm high on methamphetamine. I'm just a comedian. According to Lucic himself, he spent time on Skid Row in Los Angeles and was robbed at least twice during his stay there, despite being homeless. Lucic and his friend Bobby would unsuccessfully try to be discovered comedically, insisting on being grime step as fuck, attending comedy clubs on open mic nights, and gaining no ground. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. What the fuck is that shit? Do you fucking hear that shit? What the fuck is that shit? This was supposedly a continued trend, as a little more digging reveals that prior to moving to California, Lucic had spent around six months in Manhattan, homeless and destitute, and having as little luck in comedy clubs as he would in California. This all comes from the description on Lucas's Kickstarter profile, quote, I have been chasing my dream for so long, but it all started when I decided to leave everything and go to New York City. I think it was Brad Pitt in Fight Club who best said, it isn't until you have lost everything that you are free to do anything. I had nothing, therefore I had nothing to lose. I sold everything I owned except the clothes on my back and a bus ticket to Manhattan, the place that if you make it there, can pretty much make it anywhere. I was there for six entire months and completely homeless. I fucking hate New York. I was there for six fucking months trying to fucking be an actor, dude. Six months, grinding it out every fucking day. I met Kevin Bacon, Chris Rock, Henry fucking Winkler, JR that worked at the comic strip. I sold over 30 fucking tickets at comic strip and they never gave me one fucking stage time on stage. When I wasn't staying in the shelter, I was getting kicked out of open mics at all the best comedy clubs. I would audition and they would turn me down. 
I met my comedy hero Jim Carrey, who just told me to get a job and stop being a bum. I also met comedy legend Chris Rock, who just asked me for a business card, which is basically the biggest metaphorical F you in the biz of show. It can be true what they say, never meet your heroes." Unquote. Near the end of the post, Lusik dates it by saying his goal is to get his show off the ground by the end of this year, 2017. Along with his YouTube channel, Lucas would soon create a Twitter account, at Lusik Zero, in August of 2011, which he would briefly use in another attempt to garner popularity. With no followers to speak of and no hashtags in his posts, there was essentially no way for anyone to discover them, but that didn't stop him trying. From pretending to be a viewer who just stumbled onto his work, to using cutesy emoticons and simply repeating YouTube Gemini wise over and over again, Lucas would be active on this account for a month, from September to October of 2011. He also made a claim that he knocked a paparazzi guy out at the grocery store, and that the cops were coming for him. But there is no evidence of this being true. Likewise, there's no evidence that he really is a Tosh.0 lookalike. Lusik also started a Vine account in 2013, which remains up to this day, though he only ever posted three videos. A commenter under one of the clips we uploaded to YouTube identified the filming location as the Boise Rescue Mission, which implies he had already returned to Idaho by this point in time. He would stay off Twitter until 2014 when he created his other account, at the Fox app. Not long before, he would first launch the Kickstarter project under the same initial name. From here, the story would unfold publicly as it was presented by iDubs on his show. Though the constant criticism, negative reception and insults would have acted as a turn to most, to Lucas this was his big break. His videos would gain considerable attention. Before its deletion, his Little Caesar dubstep video had reached nearly 300,000 views, with his videos in general garnering tens of thousands of views despite the channel only having around 5,000 subscribers. To quote his Kickstarter profile again, I do plan on working insanely hard to make this web series a reality. I have dozens of creative, original and hilarious ideas. I've been putting videos on my YouTube channel for over 6 years now, and I have just over 1.2 million views on my YouTube channel. I am trying to reach my goal of being weird, funny and awkward and performing guerrilla style comedy out in the public, and eventually launch my website, fearthebeard.com. If you want a better idea of what my comedy is about, please watch my YouTube channel youtube.com slash user slash geminwise. That link will show you a bunch of shit show videos. There are also tons of parody videos which to me suggests I have already made it, if everyone is already making fun of it." Unquote. This modicum of internet fame seemed to encourage and motivate Lucas to, to produce content somewhat prolifically in the following years, though interest in him would gradually dwindle over time. His videos would feature both his usual antics, harassing people and trying to play jokes on the street, including the homeless. I'm gonna have to ask you to stop that. Despite his own destitute condition. As well as videos dedicated entirely to his beatboxing, even doing grime step tutorials, teaching his viewers the technique behind the sounds he would create. So basically it's like <laughs> These videos can at times feel like they were made by a wholly different Lucas. Despite the subject matter, he seemed to have a modicum of decency and seemed to be genuinely trying to instruct his audience. Though largely still receiving hate and being the target of continued mockery, Lucic would earn a number of earnest fans during this time. His sounds were harsh, but some commenters, especially many of those who visit his video archives, note that there was certainly a level of technical skill and talent involved, as unconventional as it was, and that at times it would actually sound pretty good. Um, also, I've been doing a drum step style that is um, very technical as well. It's like drum and bass with basically uh, dubstep bass lines. So it goes like this. <clears throat> That's hip hop, Lucas. I know. I'm getting there. It was around this time in 2017 that he ran into our anonymous associate again. Quote, I remember when he came back from California. We were at a bar and he was telling me that a gypsy blessed him 
and said he was going to be famous. And he found some magical rock on the beach or some shit and said he met Eddie Murphy's manager. We were like, yeah, okay, man. All of this leads to two major entries which bring some clarity to the Lucic saga. One of them is the aforementioned Kickstarter description and another far more obscure post also made in 2017. Feardbeardweb.wordpress.com must have been Lucic's brief attempt at two things. Firstly, starting a website like the one he mentioned on his Kickstarter page on YouTube, though notably the URL on those pages was incorrect. The second reason he had made this site was to solicit donations. Five of the six posts on the WordPress site are placeholders, but one of them reads in part. I'm looking for grimy kids to get grimy on this page. Blog about whatever idea sparked your mind about what I should do out in the public as far as trolling people and messing with civilians. Just make sure you watch my videos on YouTube Gemini's to get a feel what I do as an actor, comedian, beatboxer. If you are an actor or comedian, then get grimy, kid. If you are looking to get noticed, then write about what you've done. Write about your struggles and what you've been through and why you deserve to be making film with the fucking degenerate. What you have gone through and what you're willing to do to make music video with Lucic. This is a fight club only grimy kids that donate to the fucking degenerate account are allowed. How you become a grimy kid is simply you donate $20 to my fucking degenerate account. Then after you donate $20 to my account, you make a video of you acting crazy out in the public doing something crazy and spontaneous. If I like it, I will personally make a video drop for you on my YouTube page and possibly work with you on a new upcoming music video. What can I say, I'm the fucking degenerate. As for this site, I want you to blog about why you hate me so much. This is your opportunity to show your hate and write something that sparks your interest in Lucic D. Then maybe, just maybe, you'll get grime. So, what are you waiting for? Start your blog." Unquote. He then ends the post with a picture of himself giving the middle finger to the camera. A single comment had been left on the page by a commenter going by Il Gucciorca, reading, You're so fucked up, it's really sad and pathetic. Sue your mouth closed, please. To this, Lucic responds, No, I'll actually keep my mouth open for you, take it, you're a grimy kid. Wow. Going by the rambling nature of his posts, as well as his apparent real-life interactions, it seemed as though something had snapped within Lucas, whether due to mental strain, illness, or drug use is unclear. Two things should be noted from the archive comment sections. According to the uploader, someone claiming to be close to Lucic would frequently post comments making claims that he had overdosed and died, but this claim had no basis in reality as Lucas would continue to upload content online. The uploader had grown tired of these comments and deleted all of them. Meanwhile with Lucas himself, around this time he seems to have been making an attempt to earn some money by taking part in a multi-level marketing scheme under CTFO, a company selling CBD oil products. A question would arise to some of the viewers. For some time now, Lucic had been doing his videos on his own, recording himself with his phone camera, prompting some to wonder where his friend and comedy partner Bobby had gone, as one could judge from several of the videos he had uploaded. The relationship between Bobby and Lucic had grown cold and best. Bobby, I want to show you something, Bobby. No, Lucas, do you understand what you just did, dude? What did I do? You just, at 3.30 in the morning, decided to randomly wake me up out of nowhere saying, Bobby, 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 just to show me some stupid fucking video. I don't give a fuck. This is about me and my shit. You're being really selfish right now. I'm being really selfish right now because I don't want to be woken up at 3.30 in the morning. Bobby, I want to show you this shit, dude. It's good. It's a fucking badass video. I don't care. It's 3.30 in the morning, man. What should we do? We got... Bobby, we need to work, Bobby. Bobby, we need to work on some shit. No, I swear. Like, I will legit... This is one of those times where I will kick the fuck out of you. All right, I do do that. I can't even. I can't even fake lie on that shit. I can't help it, Bobby. I just get lonely, and then I hop on Facebook and I, I start posting things because I like to post. <laughs> posting things is fun. <laughs> Everyone should post this because it's fun. <laughs> the question of Bobby's whereabouts would be answered on a live YouTube Q and A session done by Lucas on February seventeenth, two thousand and eighteen. Next question. Where's Bobby? Bobby killed himself in New York City. He jumped off a bridge. 
That's the truth. Next question. The Q&A otherwise consisted largely of harassments and viewers, many of them fans of and brought to the channel by Lee V's here, poking fun at his YouTube career, interspersed with more beatboxing. This was perhaps the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back, as on March 9th, 2018, Lucic uploaded the following video onto his YouTube channel, titling it, This is the end. I'm done on this YouTube channel. This is it. Um, I lied about the CBD making $5,000. Um, I was just trying to get people signed up, you know, I don't have anything, dude. <laughs> I don't have shit. So, you know, I got discovered like eight years ago by somebody in the Hollywood industry. And he told me my friend that we were meant to be a comedy duo and nothing's happened for eight years. So I've been putting stuff on YouTube to try to get famous and it's not working out and fucking I'm sick of fucking all you fucking it fucking loser haters that don't know who the fuck I am or what the fuck I'm about. And you know what? You can suck my fucking dick. Okay, because you don't fucking know me and you don't have a fucking clue what I'm about. So fuck you. Eat a fucking dick. I've done more in my life than any of you motherfuckers. I've lived in homeless shelters all across the motherfucking United fucking states going to and from stand up comedy, putting fucking comedy up on YouTube to try to fucking get some, you know, get famous. So and yeah. Yet I have slept. I woke up this morning and I've been praying most of the night. So shut the fuck up. Shut your fucking mouth. Have a nice fucking life, YouTube. Peace out. And yet this appeared untrue as he was back to uploading again soon after, uploading several other videos, mostly YouTube shorts featuring his grime step, from 2018 into 2020. It would be in November of that year that the final shift in his story would come. In 2020, Lucas's channel experienced another drastic change. All of his old content was suddenly deleted, the channel renamed to Schizophonic TV, and the profile picture changed to a highly edited and filtered picture of, presumably, Lucic himself. In November, from the 5th to the 23rd, a series of short clips were uploaded, all of them mirroring uploads to a TikTok account set up by Lucas at Schizophonic My Life. The videos were clips of his grime step beatboxing and spoken word, reminiscent of his YouTube shorts, but heavily edited and put through a series of filters, much like his profile picture. Yeah, like that headbanger shit. I mean that headbanger shit. These videos have an unnerving, psychedelic quality to them, with a number of them, including Lucas addressing his deceased friend, Bobby, between his beatboxing. Oh, hey, Bobby! Oh, whoa, 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 they don't. Don't act like they fucking do. You're part of the conspiracy. Meditate on that. People are fucking six feet, six, 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 six. You know what six, six, six stands for? Six, six, six. S-I-C-K. You know what six, six, six stands for? It stands for S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K. Say it real fast. Think about it. Six, 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 six. The last of such clips were uploaded to TikTok in January of 2021. In them, Lucas ponders his fate and likens himself to Van Gogh, saying he was homeless and destitute in his life, despite how revered he is now. The devil comes in many, many forms. Van Gogh was homeless. He only made 400, fra 400 francs okay, in, in his paintings. Okay, the establishment and the royalty blood 
they they took his paintings, okay? And they waited years, years later to sell that to the royal blood. His TikTok account has since been deleted and it's unknown where he is now. The last clip uploaded to his YouTube channel, which is now titled I'm Artist Not Human to You, dates back to March of 2021. Around this time, he would also start leaving comments on videos posted to the Lucic Diamond Eyes archive. Lucic seemed to be under the impression that the channel creator was deliberately stealing Lucic's content for profit and to mock him, and demanded repeatedly that the videos be taken down or he would sue the channel owner. These threats were empty and as the owner himself has explained, he hasn't made a single cent off these videos. Lucic also takes the time to refute claims of his overdose and drug use as a whole, though how much one can believe him when he says he doesn't use any drugs is certainly up for debate. If anyone knows what has happened to him since, they haven't spoken out, leaving his current whereabouts and status a mystery. Or so was the case when I had begun working on this video, but as I was wrapping up this script, a surprising development had occurred. On February 15th, 2022, Lucas had done a live stream on YouTube, which the owner of the Lucic archive was able to catch and download for the archives. It's worth going through it in depth. Two things jump out immediately. For one, Lucas is clean shaven, seems far more composed than entirely lucid, his grime step ticks, so to speak, not showing themselves at all. Secondly, the live stream, while still recorded on his phone, didn't come from the streets or a shelter, but from a clean, decently kept apartment or a hotel room. And although he answers questions throughout the video, the main purpose of it is quite exact to hire an art consultant to represent Lucic's digital art technology, a phrase which he repeats multiple times. A digital art technology, a digital art technology, a digital art technology is a lot of digital art technology. Granted, the offer to hire a consultant turns to a demand for one, with Lucas declaring that he wouldn't pay said consultant for it. So I'm hiring right now for an entertainment lawyer. You're going to represent me in the comments. And no, um, I'm not going to pay you. Lucas boasts about his artistic ability, claiming he had created over 35 to 45 different genres of music, again comparing himself to the likes of Monet and Mozart, and saying he's deserving of a Nobel Prize. You're going to be representing a modern day Monet. You're going to be representing a modern day Mozart. No, 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 actually, that'll be with other people that are going to represent me in my music. And you're probably thinking, well, why? Why is that? Because what I've created is so innovative and it's so like, like it's a Nobel Prize. You know what I'm saying? It's a Nobel. One of these genres seems to be schizophonic, though looking for it on the internet, Lucic remains the only result. Well, that is if you look specifically for the term, as the autocorrect on Google decides that you really mean schizophrenic, and frankly, they're not wrong. It seems like he would prefer to keep his days of comedy in the past, as indicated by his answers when asked about Bobby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can we stop talking about Bobby? Yeah, yeah, that's that's another story. Bobby, Bobby doesn't exist, okay? Bobby's dead, supposedly, so. Lucas also makes the claim that he had been offered hundreds of thousands of dollars and a Mercedes to work in Florida, but this claim seems completely outlandish and isn't backed by much. According to Lucas, he declined this offer prior to his return to Idaho, which makes it hard to tell when this offer could have been made at all. He also claims someone from his hometown offered 10 grand for a piece of his art, which he too rejected. He also reveals his reasoning behind taking down his videos, saying that he believes people would steal his content and sell it, possibly as NFTs. I had to lock up on my YouTube channel, and the reason why is because that can be taken off and people can make, uh, you know, NFTs or, or gaming art behind my back and make money behind my back. And if your art or whatever you do or create, if it doesn't have your name on it, people will take it, man. People will take it and they'll run with it. On this, he might have a point since his content probably has the sort of vibe you'd expect from NFT projects and they'd likely sell with or without his permission. Overall, the state of affairs remains sad with Lucas growing increasingly agitated, complaining about the lack of recognition and viewership he's receiving. Okay, let's, let's let, look at this. There's only seven people watching this right now. How can there only be seven fucking people watching this right now? How can there only be seven people watching and listening to a real Hollywood story right now? 
though he also briefly admits to suffering from mental health issues as a result of the abuse he's received. Um, I've, su I've suffered from uh, some mental health you know, illness because of people. And then, you know, I, I, I've suffered problems from, from fucking dark people, demonic people that have oppressed me to the point of creating this art. And guess what? It's not worth anything. You know what I mean? I don't have any views on my YouTube channel. Does this make, this doesn't make sense. However, there is arguably some character development. I used to post a lot of crazy, stupid videos 10 years ago when I was doing uh, comedy out in the public. It was whack shit. I know it was like, Cringe beyond cringe, you know what I'm saying? But this doesn't last. His boastfulness quickly returns and lasts until the end of the video. Who does that? Who who lets a modern day Van Gogh, a modern day, modern day Mozart, modern day Mo I can prove it. My art proves it. Straight up, it proves it. I'm not here to keep posting on, so I'm not, I don't care, dude. I am not here to keep posting on your social media platforms for people to just pickpocket my digital art and leave me in poverty to suffer and tell me to go get a nine to five loser. That's bullshit. I should be hired by every freaking gaming company in the world right now. I should be hired by freaking every single EDM artist in the world right now. I should be, uh, I should be, um, I should be getting more Nobel prizes and more digital art technology, uh, music video awards than anybody in the world right now. For now, this is Lucic's last message, though for how long that remains true remains to be seen. Lucas, Lucic Diamond Dice, The Little Caesars Grime Stepper, Gemin Wise, or Schizophonic, this is where the story currently ends. A story which acts as a cautionary tale for those who would give up everything in pursuit of a dream, and a stark reminder that not all attention is good attention. A lesson in how attitude and public perception can deeply affect success, because when it comes to separating the art from the artist, you can only go so far when the art isn't stellar and the artist is unhinged. Whether you see Lusik as having gotten his due, or as someone who had wasted genuine talent, whether as a tragic figure or an object of amusement, there is one thing to be said for certain. His path is one which should be avoided at all costs. Thank you for watching this, the pilot episode to what is, hopefully, going to be a series looking into the lives of Kickstarter Crafts past. Let me know in the comments what you thought and what you'd like to see in the future. Follow-up videos coming soon, including an in-depth look at Through Lucic's last livestream and a Q&A.